So today we're going to go over the proper pre-trip procedure for a flatbed tractor trailer unit. So your pre-trip begins before you even get to the truck itself. As you're walking up to it, you're looking the truck over. You're looking for any apparent damage. You're looking to see if the truck is leaning or listing to one side or the other, which could indicate a suspension issue. You're looking underneath the truck. You're looking for any leaks, any wire hanging down. You're also looking around the surrounding area to see if when you pull out, you might encounter low hanging power lines, tree branches, anything that you might hit or cause you issues as you're pulling out of wherever you're parked at. So once we get up to the truck, we're gonna come in here. We're gonna ensure that our brakes are set and our truck is in neutral. Leaving the engine off, I'm going to turn the key one click. And then with the Peterbilt models, they have a pre-trip assist button right here, which will cycle your lights. So by pressing it once, it will cycle your brake lights, your turning signals, your marker lights, your high and low beam headlights. You can't check a light and tell if it's working if you don't turn them on. Now I can come up here, pop the hood, When you're raising the hood, do not ever place your foot right here in the center. This is where the Bendix system is. That sensor, if you damage it, it will affect your cruise control and your truck will not want to operate correctly. With the hydraulic assist on these trucks, there's no need to even put your foot against it. Simply with one hand, you can lift, second hand here to support, bring it down to the stop and you're good to go. So now that we're into the engine compartment, the best way to do this is find your routine and then stick with it. Whatever order you check these things in, as long as you check them the same way every time, you are a lot less likely to miss anything. Me, I like to start at the top, kind of work my way down. So I'm coming up here, checking my boots. Got my washer fluid right here. It's full. Check my hoses, my wires. Make sure I have not, no abrasions, cuts, or bulges. Working my way down, I get to my dipstick for my oil. So I'm gonna check my oil. Wipe it off. Back in all the way. Come back out, oil looks good. Right in front of that, power steering fluid, filled to the proper level. Steering arm, no excess play. My U-joints are all good. Now since I'm on the steering, I'm just gonna follow that system on down and eliminate it. So when I'm checking my steering column, grab right here, it's tight. No excess play. Coming down, U-joint appears to be in good condition. Power steering unit. Pitman arm, drag link. Castle nuts are in place with the locking pins. Following it back, same thing here. Second castle nut in place with the, lo with the locking pin in intact. So everything is tight and secure. So now that I've followed my steering system out, I'm gonna come back up to where I was, check my alternator, tight and secure, belt, proper tension, and moving forward, my fan. I'm gonna look at my fan over, I wanna make sure there's no crack, missing, or damaged blades. Everything seems to be in good working order. Come back down here now, come across here, my frame rail, no holes, no illegal welds, no damage. My fuel water separator and fuel filter look appear to be good. It's not full, it's not waxy, which would indicate a gelling issue. Especially in the winter time, you must make sure that you are using additive in your fuel. Especially if you start in the southern area and come up north, southern fuel is not treated like northern fuel is. If you fill up down south and come up here without adding additive, you will have a gelling issue. And gelling 
is considered to be neglect, which will result in you not receiving breakdown pay. So now I'm gonna work down, got my brakes right here. Check my hose, no abrasions, bulges. Brake can, tight and secure. Slack adjuster right here. Now the way to check that, you just you can reach in here and give it a pull. You should have no more than an inch free play. With your slack adjusters, all of our trucks have automatic slack adjusters. The way that you adjust them is by pressing your brake pedal all the way to the floor, releasing it, and doing that two or three times, it will ratchet your brakes into perfect adjustment. On normal operation, with normal wear, that you do not put enough pressure against them for them to ratchet. So during your pre-trip and post-trip, the pump down, if you're doing them properly, will do that. So once you've checked your slack adjuster, just follow the system down. You're gonna check your brakes and your drums. When you're looking at your drums, any bluing of the steel will indicate that you've gotten them hot, which is something that you need to have maintenance look at. With your brake pads, there is a wear, mark, wear line on them. You wanna ensure that you are not worn beyond that point. You also can make sure that your brake pads are not cracked or damaged. Work your way out, check your rim on the inside. Check your rim for any cracks, damage, or illegal welds. Side of the inside of the tire, you're looking to make sure your bead is seated properly. Checking the inside of the tire for any abrasions or bulges. Work your way up to the top of the tire. You're looking for cap separation, proper tread depth. When you're checking your tread depth, you can go out and buy one of those depth gauge testers or all you really need is a penny. On the penny, if you place it in multiple spots, and this is a brand new tire, so, but you wanna check multiple spots on different ends of the tire with your penny. The top of Lincoln's head is 230 seconds tread depth, which is what you need minimum for drives and trailer tires. The top of Lincoln's hairline, right where his forehead meets his hairline, is 430 seconds. That is what you need for steer tires. Just continue your way right down the outside of the tire. Once again, looking for cap separation. Checking your sidewall for any abrasions or bulges. Checking your bead for proper seating. Checking your rim, no cracks, welds, or damage. Valve stem, straight, not bent not leaking. Check your lug nuts. Go through. If you see any shiny threads or rust trails coming off of the lug nut, that's an indication that you've got a loose lug nut. Come through, check your hub. Make sure you've got no leakage, no oil in here, or oil on the inside, which would indicate a blown wheel seal. I checked my brake system, my tire. I'm going to come back in. I'm going to check my suspension. I'm going to check my spring mounts. My springs, make sure they're, they're perfectly aligned. There's no scissoring going on, no broken springs. I'm gonna check my U-bolts to make sure they are tight and secure. My axle appears to be in good condition and my shock is not leaking, which indicated it was bl is blown out. It is properly mounted, tight and secure. Now that I've checked this side over thoroughly, I can proceed to the other side of the engine compartment. But I'm on this side. I can check my coolant for proper level. Check all my boots, my exhaust system. I'm gonna work my way down. I'm gonna check all my wires and hoses for any abrasions or audible leaks. Now at this point, I'm going to proceed with checking everything that I checked on the other side the exact same way. So frame, brakes, tires, suspension. Now that I've checked this side out and everything appears to be in good working order, I can go ahead and close the hood. With the Peterbilt, there is a latch on this side that you must release for the hood to be able to come down. It's located right here. It's a safety system so that if, while you're underneath here looking at things and inspecting it, if the wind were to blow, it's not going to bring the hood down on top of your head. Simply press that down. And you can come around here, close your hood. Kind of controlled, close it, don't just give it a shove and let it slam. It's hard on things to do that. 
I can come over here, latch this side. Now I'm going to start right here and I'm just going to start working my way around the truck. Checking my mirror, it's tight and secure. No cracks or damage on my mirrors. Body, no visible damage. Just kind of put your hands on everything. Make sure you're looking everything over. Make sure everything is properly mounted. Your grill, there's nothing blocking it. Bumper looks to be in good order. I'm looking at my lights. All my clearance lights up top are lit. My headlights are working. My blinkers are working. Come around to this mirror. Tight and secure. Not cracked or damaged. Now that I've got around here, I can latch this side. Now I'm going to check this mirror. It's tight and secure. Check my mirrors. No cracks or damage. Passenger door, tight and secure. If I pop it open, I can check. Seal all looks good. Everything looks good in here. Close it once again. Check my steps. Steps are properly mounted. There's no foreign objects or debris that would cause a tripping hazard. Getting in and out. Working way down the side of my cab. I'm looking for any damage. Making sure everything is good to go. Check my fairings, tight and secure. I've got no, nothing blocking this. This is your Bendix collision mitigation system. Is part of your collision mitigation system. It is the sensor that detects a foreign object, a metal object on your passenger side. That would be what that little blinking light and beeping is when you turn your blinker on and there's a car beside you. Well, look in here, I'm gonna make sure my fuel cap is properly mounted. I'm gonna look up, I'm gonna check my fuel lines. Make sure I don't see any leaks, any abrasions or bulges to my lines. Check my fuel straps to make sure they are tight and secure. Come back to my APU unit. This is a motor. It does need to be checked. To open it, all you do, press these two buttons, pop it open, dipstick for the oil right here, oil add is right here. This unit uses the exact same oil that your motor does. So you don't need to buy any special kind of oil. If this unit, if it needs oil, same motor that goes in the, the same oil that goes in the motor goes in here. Also check the power switch. If you're trying to use your APU, especially after you've gotten it out of a shop and it is not running, it will throw an engine fault on the display inside the cab. The first thing you need to do is get out and check and make sure that that is in the on position. Because in the off position, your display inside will still operate, but it'll throw an engine fault when it tries to start. That's the first thing to check before you need to, need to call maintenance. Once you're done, simply close it up and push the two latches down. To the back side of the cab, I'm gonna make sure that my headache rack looks to be properly mounted. All my doors are closed. I've got no foreign objects on my catwalk or in this area. I'm going to step in here, check my drive line. I can reach down and I can give a tug on my drive shaft. If it's loose, you will have, you do have a problem. Quarter fender, properly mounted, tight and secure. Catwalk, tight and secure. So now I can check my drives, my front suspension. You are going to get a little dirty doing a proper pre-trip. So if you've got a set of cover hauls, it's not a bad idea. But I'm going to come in here and I'm going to lean in. So once again, I can check my suspension, check my airbags, check my brakes on the inside, shocks, check my tires. Same as I did on the steer tire, I'm going to do on each individual drive tire. The only difference back here is since these are duals, I'm look also looking in between to make sure that my rims are properly seated against one another and that I have no foreign objects in between the two. While I'm here in this position, it's a good time to check my fifth wheel. I'm looking across the, between the fifth wheel and the apron to make sure there is no light showing between, no gapping. I'm checking my fifth wheel mounting bolts to make sure they are all there and they are all tight and secure. Looking at my cross members up front here to make sure none of them are bent, damaged, and none of my rivets are missing. Come up top. Make sure I've got my two tarps since this is an empty flatbed. You must carry two lumber tarps with you at all times as they stay with the trailer. Okay. I'm going to work back to my second set of duals. All I'm, I'm going to check these the exact same way that I checked my front. It's a mirror image, so I'm just going to check these the same way. 
Once I've inspected those, I'm gonna come back, mud flap, properly mounted. You can't say tight and secure, because it does move, but it's designed that way. I'm gonna come up underneath here, checking my lights, that they are functioning properly. And I'm also gonna look straight up underneath there and I'm gonna make sure that I can see, visually see the locking jaw locked around the kingpin. You must be able to see the locking jaw locked securely around the kingpin. A tug test will lie to you. Just looking from the side at the handle, pull handle being all the way in, will lie to you. The only true way to know that you are properly hooked to one of our trailers is to visually see that jaw locked around the kingpin. If you see that jaw, you will not drop a trailer. I'm down here, I'm also checking my leveling valve to make sure it's not bent or disconnected or damaged. I'm gonna turn around, I'm gonna check my landing gear. Put your hands on it, make sure everything is tight and secure. I'm gonna look down the trailer and I'm looking at my cross members to make sure they're all straight, not bent or damaged. I've got no damages from the bottom side looking up at my decking. Once I've checked all that, I can slide out. And then come down the side of the trailer. Coming down the side of the trailer, I'm looking for any obvious damage. I'm inspecting my conspicuity tape to make sure that is all in good condition. Working way down, making sure all my winches are here. On our newer trailers, they should have eight winches on both sides of the trailer. On our older trailers, you will have anywhere from 12 to 14, depending on the age of the trailer, on the driver's side only. Just continue down, got my side marker light functioning properly. Working my way down the side of the trailer, just looking for damage. I'm looking underneath at my cross members and I get back here to my front trailer axle. So now that I'm back here, I'm gonna slide these ahead so I don't hit my head on them. And I'm gonna come down here, once again, checking my suspension system. Now, from this position, it's hard to see this side, but from here I can look across and visually inspect the other side. Same thing when I get to the other side, I can look across and easily visually inspect this side. I wanna check my alignment bolts to make sure they are tight. This line on here will fade over time, but if it's there and everything is straight, you know you're in good condition, good shape. If it's twisted in some any way, it's an indication that it might be getting loose, something you might wanna to bring to maintenance's attention. Now I'm going to inspect my tires and brakes. Once again, start from the inside, work your way out the rim, inside of tire, tread, inside of, in, inside of inside tire, rims, inside of outside tire, tread, outside tire. You're checking for abrasions, bulges, any foreign objects in between. Same thing over and over and over again. When you get to the outside of the trailer, our trailers are all equipped with an auto air system. All you need to do, just check, make sure you don't hear any audible leaks. It's also part of checking your valve stems, making sure everything's tight and not bent. It's a good idea to kick the tires. If for some reason the system wasn't functioning properly, but it wasn't sensing that it wasn't functioning properly, you could have a flat tire and not know it. Just a simple kick of the tire on the outside edge of the tread will let you know whether you've got a low tire or not. Work your way back, get to the rear axle, inspect it the same exact way you did the front axle. Come on around the back side of the trailer, ensure that you have your mud flap, that it is properly mounted. Back of the trailer, you're checking all your lights. One light that seems to be forgotten or missed is this license plate light. It's an easy ticket for the DOT if that is not lit up. Continue on around. And now we're gonna work our way back up this side, just repeating the same process we did on that side coming back. We're gonna repeat on this side going forward. As I said, repetition. Check this set of tires, check this set of tires, inspecting the trailer as you work your way up the side, inspect checking your lights, 
winches, conspicuity tape, all the way up once we get to the handle. Make sure your handle is properly stowed. All right, going down the road like this is not acceptable because that'll bounce around, it could swing out. Stow it properly before you hit the road. Once again, repetition. I work my way up this side of the truck, exact mirror image of what I did on the opposite side. Checking everything. The minute you skip a step is when you'll miss something that could cause an accident, get you hurt, get someone else hurt, or best case scenario, results in a fine, which is CSA points for you and us as a company. Just proceeding up the side of the truck. Now on the flatbeds, we've got our dunnage rack here. With the, this dunnage rack and the design of it, when it's full, you're fine. If you do utilize some of your dunnage when you're hauling coils or other material, and you only got two or three boards in here, make sure you put something down here around it so that going down the road, the boards can't vibrate and walk their way out through the middle. Wall in here, another thing you're gonna wanna check, right over here under this cap, is where your trailer registration are and your inspection paperwork. If you get stopped at a way station and they ask you to bring in your paperwork, make sure you come back and grab that and take it in with you as they will want it. Once you're done, place it back in the Ziploc baggie and tighten that back down. On the front here, this white light is your auto air system indicator. If the system is engaged in applying air to one of your tires, this will light up. When you first hook to a trailer, especially in the winter, it will light up because your trailers came in hot as the air cooled, they lost pressure, and it's going to sense that it needs pressure and air them back up to 105 PSI, which is what it's set at. So this will light up as it's doing that. If it goes out, you've got nothing to worry about. If the lights comes on and stays on, that's an indication that you've got a slow leak somewhere that you need to get addressed. Like I said, if you've used some of your dunnage and this is not full, going down the road, these will vibrate. If it bounces up out of there like that, that's going to hit the road, twist, so it'll go right into your drives. If it's not full, put something around it to hold them tight. 